Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of iced tea in hand, so let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 54. Welcome. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy to be here. What is the weather like in mid-August 2020, the middle of the pandemic? What's it like where you are? Because here in Southern California, we are in, I don't know, are we in the middle of a heat wave? We may be kind of more at the beginning of a heat wave, and I'm talking 100 degree plus weather, and it is miserable. I am mildly worried about there being a blackout here today. They're doing rolling blackouts uh, in California, and... uh, but luckily, I'm on a laptop here. It's not even plugged in <laughs> to electricity. So we'll see if uh, getting this posted is uh, foiled by the blackouts. But yeah, it's it's really, ugh. you know, we get all our hot weather in Southern California in uh, really in August and September. I know in some places, um, you know, people are waiting till they get to August and September because that's when it cools down. We are just ramping up. So anyways, enough, enough talking about the weather. We are here at the end of summer and um, my youngest uh, kid, who's actually uh, going to be a senior in high school, he's actually taking a college class and that starts on Monday. So really kind of signaling the the end of summer for him and then high school starts the the week after that and uh, what what kind of senior year is this going to be I don't really know but uh, we're just we're just going to roll with it my college kid because of the quarter system here in um, California with the UC system he doesn't start school till October 1st which is insane nobody's really happy about that I think he'd be just as happy to go to go back to school mid-September and finish by by Thanksgiving and I if they would just consult me I could straighten that whole scheduling thing out for them but nobody ever consults me so (laughs) but anyway so we're, we're really getting getting to the end of it here um I do have a little bit of a funny story. My my college kid uh, has been a counselor for a online tech camp for the last um, I don't know some number of weeks, and he basically teaches little kids how to play Minecraft. You know, it's all on Zoom. It's all online. Apparently, this is a camp that takes place on um, like college campuses around the country in person uh, in a normal year. But um, so this has been kind of fun for him. And um, so his last class, he had um, like four seven-year-old girls who knew nothing about Minecraft, knew nothing about computers. So it was pretty, it was pretty funny, pretty cute. But he had a funny story when at a dinner where it was like, tell us the funny story (laughs) from work today. And um, this particular day, one of the little girls found out that you could make a cat on Minecraft, which was very exciting information. And, um, and then all the other girls were like, you can make a cat, show us how to make a cat. So he showed him how to, I don't really, I'm, maybe I'm not using the right words, but he showed him how to make a cat. And then it turns out you can make the cats have kittens even better. So in a matter of moments, they were just doing this, doing this, doing this until like the class sort of came to a screeching halt because they couldn't hear him talk anymore because there were so many kittens meowing on their screen, <laughs> which I thought was so hilarious and such a seven-year-old girl thing. So anyways, so yeah, we're just, you know, doing what we can. Um, I, you know, again, here in August, I feel like I'm just going to give up on vegetable gardening. Gardening, The garden is a wreck. We have huge plants, huge cucumber plants, no cucumbers. I don't know what's going on. I think I'm just going to just cut my losses and just turn that whole area into a cutting garden. Just plant flowers and and stop trying to grow vegetables because I do not know what's going on over there. But uh, so all the all the lessons to to be learned here at the end of summer. But enough with that. Let's get on to quilting. But first, thank you to Fat Quarter Shop for sponsoring the podcast. Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality, fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and even cross-stitch supplies. 
And now Fat Quarter Shop is celebrating the quilting community with a free block of the week quilt along called Socialites. They joined forces with 18 talented designers to bring you a 38 week quilt along with amazing sampler blocks and so many options. So this is how it works. They will release one block every Friday starting on Friday, September 25th, 2020, and it will end on Friday, June 25th, 2021. What will our life be like? then. Kimberly will show her block on YouTube live stream on the same day and every designer will also post their block on that day as well. I am totally thinking about doing this and I hope that you do too. I will put a link in the show notes. All right, let's talk quilting. I am totally knocking things out of the park with finishing up my works in progress, my unfinished quilts, whatever you want to call them. I finished binding my uh, scrappy trip quilt, which came out really cute. The um, I did a navy binding, and uh, once I my finger healed from um, cutting it from <laughs> pretty badly on the V slicer, I was able to finally finish um, quilting that or bind, hand binding that. And um, again, I am loving these satin quilt labels that I bought from Border City Quilts. She's actually changed the name of the uh, company because um, it has so taken off. It's actually called Ever Emblem now. But on Instagram, she's at this point still Border City Quilts. And here's something I forgot to tell you last time, but I did put it in the show notes. So always check the show notes because I put there everything I forgot to say in the podcast. But um, she gave me a coupon code, which is um, SHE10, S-H-E-10 for 10% off. Um, you can remember it's Simple Handmade Every Day makes the acronym SHE. Isn't that handy? So definitely check that out if you are interested in getting these. So again, what I have, and she has many options, but I have um, these satin, kind of like back, remember when they used to have tags and clothes? I feel like they don't do that very often. It's a little satin tag, like a clothing tag that you fold in half and then you just sew into the um, edge of your quilt and then the binding will cover up the raw edge of it. And mine says Handmade with Love by Kristen Esser. I know some people put the year. Um, and so it'll, you know, just handmade or however you want to say it um, by Kristen Esser and then the year. But I think, I can't remember how many came in it, but maybe it was, say, let's say it was 20. I don't make 20 quilts in a year. Um, but that is a good way to kind of keep track of that kind of thing. So anyways, Border City Quilts, which is now called, what did I say, Ever Emblem. Um, and there's a, a coupon code SHE10 and you get 10% off. I'll put a link in the show notes. As for ongoing projects, I'm still continuing to hand quilt the hand piece quilt along quilt that was the first one we did and um, from a couple years ago now and I mentioned this last time I'm not very good at it but I'm getting better <laughs> which has been good and it is now to the point I love ha having a project that you can just pick up and start at any time like there's no thought required there's nothing you need to do and that's where that project is I've got all my supplies and just like a little bowl and anywhere I am I can just sit down and sew for a little while I'm just doing a um, a simple straight line cross hatched pattern I'm almost done with the diagonals one way I'm tempted to leave it there but I know I'll like it better if uh, I go back the other direction and what got me over myself on this one was coming across the technique of using blue painters tape to mark the sewing line. So I just um, put that tape across and I just sew um, down one side of it. And I do move it each time so that I'm sewing the same direction, which I didn't do right at first. I sewed up one side and down the other. And then you get those weird little ripples, which I'm just not even going to worry about. I'm hoping that that will, um, I don't know, I can block that out or something but um yeah so that's been just really nice i really do love handwork um and i do have an oh gosh i do have another hand piecing project that i could finish actually a actually a few <laughs> now that i think about it uh, years ago i did the uh fat quarter shop charity quilt along with these little six inch blocks and i hand pieced them all and i just need to put them together and what has really been stopping me there is I need to do the sashing on them, which I actually don't mind doing at all, but I have to lay them out and um, it's 70 some blocks and there's just part of me that just thinks that seems like a lot of work, but maybe that should be next to my list. But I'm definitely, um, I'm finishing up that 
um, handpiece quilt salon quilt, which is just super fun for me. And I'm on to my solids quilt, which is called Rooftop Wonders. And I wanted to talk about that for a minute. So, you know, I'm so weird. So I started this project again. I mean, going on, oh, I'm so embarrassed, two years ago or something. And it was my first all solids quilt. I was making it for my teenage son, who now is going to go away to college <laughs> in a year. But um, you had to sew together all these strips. I'm not used to working with solids. Um, so you sew together these strips and then you're going to cut them into smaller pieces um, so that it all looks really random. And we spent a long time picking colors, you know, to go, there's probably 12 different uh, brights in, in this, you know, and there's three different gray, shades of gray. And it's all, so I'm just on making these strips of the brights. And I know what happened is... Um, even though you're supposed to do it kind of randomly, I have a hard time. I'm more like a planned random person, but I made uh, one of the, the strips needs to be like 11 strips wide. And I didn't like the color combination that it was. Um, a lot, you know, I like, I like a lot of deeper colors and this had more of um, a baby blue stripe and a yellow stripe to kind of make it a little bit more interesting than everything being dark, but I didn't like it. And I set it aside and that then I just set it aside for a year and a half and when I pulled everything out and I ironed it and I put stuff on my design wall I realized exactly I mean it was clear to me the part that I wasn't liking and so I undid that strip and put it together in a different way and I mean it it took all of 30 seconds to rip that strip off and and put it together in a different combination and now it's fine but I set that project aside for a year and a half for something that was so easily fixed um, and it's, I don't know, I think it, I was just a little embarrassed about that. I was just like, you know what, why did you do this? Why did, you know, you knew how to fix it. You knew what you didn't like. Why didn't you just the next day? I mean, I'm all for setting things aside when you're frustrated with them or when it's not going right. But, um, you know, I could have set it aside for a day, a week, a month, but 18 months, <laughs> kind of crazy. So anyways, I'm back on that. Um, and I think I will be doing more machine sewing right now because when the weather's really nice, I don't really like to sit at my sewing machine because I would rather be outside. I've spent so much time outside and by outside, I don't mean doing, I mean, I've done, done some gardening, but mostly I just mean sitting out on the patio in my swing chair, reading or watching TV or whatever, you know, but, but now it's so hot. You just like, it's not even safe to be outside anymore. So I think I'll be sitting at my machine a little bit more. And I'll be so happy to uh, to really get going on this quilt that I have just been dragging my feet on for so long. Now I'm going to do something that I've never done before, a little Q&A session. I put a prompt in the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group that I was going to do a little Q&A, and it was kind of an ask me anything um, situation, and I was a little afraid that actually nobody would ask any questions, but I got a few. So let's, let's uh, do those now. One of them is if you could spend a day or a week with anyone in the quilting community, famous or not, who would it be? Um, that is a really good question. And I will tell you right now that I have some friends in the quilting industry uh, or the quilting community um, that I do not see in real life. And we have talked about like doing a retreat at Bonnie Hunter's retreat centers at the Quiltville Inn and I would um, want to hang out with obviously Bonnie Hunter and Frances Dow from the Off Kilter Quilt, Holly Ann Knight from String and Story, Vicki Holloway from uh, My Creative Corner 3 and Patty Dudek of Elm Street Quilts. We've done the handpiece quilts along twice now, never met in real life. So I would love a big sewing retreat with those people at the Quiltville Inn. That's probably a cheating answer, but that is the truth. Next is, do I have a favorite quilt block? I've been thinking about this one ever since I saw that because I'm like, I don't know. I will tell you that my favorite quilting unit is the half square triangle. I have a deep and abiding love for the half square triangle because it is so versatile. So I love, love that. Um, right now, I am very fascinated with the block, um, called the flowering snowball because again it is a very versatile block and I've been playing around with a, a quilt design um, using that one single block it's a perfect block if you're 
um, if you'd like to do curves but you're a little afraid of like the orange peel block it has very gentle curves and it's just super cool looking blocks so right now flowering snowball um, do I have a favorite of the quilts that you that I've made <laughs> she says I suspect it's not the pineapple quilt although I, she really likes that one um, I should say who's asking these questions the first one was by Theona, the favorite quilt block question by Jerry. And so now Colleen asks, what's my favorite quilt? Um, that's actually not a hard question for me because my very favorite quilt is the one, it's called uh, Indigo Illusion. It was, um, it's a blue and white quilt that was in, I think it was American Patchwork and Quilting about a year ago. It is made with a combination of um, wovens almost like a a uh, the background is like a linen um, and quilting fabrics it's just got it's got like three different types of fabric textures in it and it's um, the the blue in it all kind of looks like visible mending it's I just I love that quilt in the winter it's wonderful because it's super heavy and my friend Holly Ann quilted it gorgeously so that's my favorite quilt um, it's not the pineapple quilt <laughs> even though that one's fun and people are using it now i need to take a nice picture of it before somebody spills coffee on it but um, i am glad that pineapple quilt is done um, and now marcia asks what brand of sewing machine do i have and if i have one more than one what do i use them for i have a juki i have a juki um, 2200 which uh so the it's just a industrial it's not really is it industrial it's a straight stitch machine it's heavy, it does one thing, and it does it beautifully. I'll put a link in my show notes to the review I wrote for it. Gosh, it was in July, I remember that, um, probably three years ago. So I probably had that machine for three years, and I bought it because I was totally um, on the hunt for something that I could do free motion quilting on. So it has a larger throat space than your average machine, um, but it's only straight stitch, and it free motion quilts beautifully any hitch with free motion quilting quality is on my part <laughs> so it's funny that I went searching for this machine because now I'm sending like everything to a long armor but I didn't know that was in my future but it's just got so much space uh, it, the stitch quality is great it's under a thousand dollars I think at this point I think when I bought it it was brand new um, and uh, it was maybe 1200 or something like that I, ca I can't remember but for that extra space, it's such a deal. I also very heavily looked at the Baby Lock Jazz, which also um, gives you a lot of throat space, but it didn't have two features which were kind of deal killers for me. One is the ba the, the Jazz did not have a, a, a knee lift, and it didn't have a, um, I think it was a thread cutter. And, and I actually said, you know what, I think in a few years, uh, the baby lock jazz will have those features because it's got to be such a deal killer and I think it does now <laughs> so there we are I'm predicting the future so that's also uh, something to look at if you're looking for something with more throat space now before the juki um, I had a baby lock um, I still do have a baby lock and they don't even make it anymore it's called like the decorator's choice and it was my um big upgrade machine when I started sewing more seriously and it's like your typical um, standard domestic sewing machine I bought the floor model um, and at the time it cost about $800 it felt or maybe it was 600 it felt like a huge amount of money and I was a stay-at-home mom with three little kids so it was kind of a big deal but it's one of those ones that has a gazillion stitches and and all that it just has a normal size throat space so it was very hard to do actual quilting on um, and so that one basically I like to say if you know the dirty dancing reference sometimes I just put baby in the corner um, and my daughter used it when she started uh, making masks at the middle, middle of the at the beginning rather of the pandemic um, and I have taken it out and used it a few times like I used it when I made this the um, pineapple quilt because I needed to do a blanket stitch for applique so if I need any stitch like that if I need a zigzag if I need a any kind of an applique stitch then I go for that but um, I gotta tell you I don't like it anymore I really could use a, a 
a better sewing machine. It, I struggled with the stitch quality on it for a long time. And I mean, the machine is probably 12 years old, which like if you have a Bernina, you know, like that's nothing, right? But, um, and I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't hesitate to buy a baby lock again. I just think I didn't buy the greatest sewing machine. So it is there for when I need it. Um, but for what I do right now, um, piecing and uh, free motion quilting, straight line quilting, um, I absolutely adore my Juki. Okay, next, Andra asks, what's your favorite part of the quilting process and your least favorite part? My favorite part, by far, is piecing, especially chain piecing. I just, I love to just sew, sew, sew. <laughs> that is my favorite part. Um, my least favorite part is basting. I hate to baste, and that might be followed by... <laughs> I hate to admit this. It might be followed by the quilting. It, it, the quilting's not my favorite part. It just it just isn't. I'm a quilt top maker. I have done lots of quilting. And um, if I'm doing things like organic straight line quilting or even just straight line quilting, that's not bad. You know, I've even really gotten into the zen of free motion. But honestly, it's it's not it's not my favorite part. And I, but, and then I guess, so piece is my favorite. Binding might be my second favorite. I, I love that time spent with that quilt in my lap, hand sewing at the finish. Totally love that. Next, Debbie asked, what was my inspiration to begin quilting? Um, I don't know if I've talked about that before, but my mom was a wonderful seamstress. She made like a lot of my clothes when I was young. She made all the drapes in our house. She made both of my prom dresses. Um, she may have made my wedding dress, but she had passed away by that time. So she definitely passed this, you know, the sewing, that sewing was a very normal thing to do on to me. Um, in my 20s, I did a lot of kind of home deck type sewing. Um, oh my gosh, puffy valances, um, stiffy bows on baskets, toaster covers, placemats, you know, all these kinds of things like that. And, um, and then just kind of let that go. I didn't have a good sewing machine. It was, you, you know, when you don't have decent tools, it can be so frustrating. Um, then when I started having babies, I just, I made some receiving blankets, little things like that. No big deal. Um, but one year I was in a thrift store and I found a pattern for um, like a, a wizard robe. And my kids were really into to Harry Potter. And I know this sounds weird. She asked about quilting, right? But this was the, this was the journey. And so I decided to make um, Halloween costumes for them. What's hilarious about this whole thing is that I, I did it in the wrong order. I made the smallest one first. I had to rebuy that pattern, which was like this old pattern, three times because I kept cutting the too small size out. It was so ridiculous. But anyways, I eventually made three wizard robes um, that they used for, thank for Thanksgiving, for Halloween. I also knitted them the house scarves, the whole thing. And... That sewing experience reminded me that I really like to sew. And so then I started sewing little things like aprons. Do you guys remember about 10 years ago, aprons got really big. So I sewed a bunch of aprons and, um, and was just kind of making little things like that. And like, what are they called? Potholders, things like that. But I was also reading blogs. Oh, man, I miss the days of, you know, checking blogs every morning and just, you know, getting that little slice of life from people. But I was um, following Soul Mama and Posey Gets Cozy. And these people were making quilts and, and simple quilts, actually just square patchwork quilts, which is the only thing I ever aspired to do. And I just was, I just wanted to make one quilt. I remember, you know, when I would make my goals for the year, I would be like, make a quilt. And um, so I, I just did one day, I was in a fabric store for some other reason. And I bought a charm pack of French general fabric. It was all kind of like a red and white. And um, I just bought it because I thought it was pretty. It was a charm pack. I didn't know what to do with it. And then it occurred to me, like weeks later that if I bought enough of those I could just sew them into a patchwork quilt because I was a little stymied by color and you know that's the beautiful beautiful thing of the the pre-cuts right so I bought like eight or nine of those um French general charm packs and I just followed Posey Gets Cozy's uh she had just a, a pattern um for how to sew squares together but I didn't know the whole process I didn't know about quarter inch seam allowances um, I didn't know about quilting, you know, and it, that's just uh, 
done with very simple offset straight line quilting. Um, but that's kind of just got me through the first uh, part of my first quilt, which is honestly still the favorite quilt in this house. Um, and it, I love it and it has been so used that it is so soft. And um, one day I'm, I need to buy more red binding fabric because we have worn through the binding, which is I never really worry about cutting quilt binding on the bias. And I think I should for that reason, because we are wearing through that quilt binding. So anyways, so it was because some people on the internet that I followed and admired made quilts. And then after that, you know, I just had the quilting bug and uh, took a class and just have never looked back from there. Tracy asks, what does a quilter do when she has too many quilts? I think I need to give away more quilts. Yes, I totally get where you're coming from. Um, and that's where a couple years ago, um, I decided that it I was on a mission to really give away as many quilts as I could to friends and family. And uh, I've talked about that before that a quilter in our industry died and her kids said, when you come to the funeral, uh, bring anything she's made you and that whole church was dripping in quilts and I said okay there's the legacy there that's the kind of legacy I want that that the love of quilting has been spread so far and wide um, I know Krista quilts um, Krista Watson from Krista quilts she also you know she is really a professional quilter and she was getting too many quilts and so one uh, Christmas time at an extended you know family gathering she just let people just pick whatever quilt they wanted and instead of you know like so they just absolutely got to pick the, the one that they would have picked instead of her maybe choosing and um, that's another another great option and then there's obviously so many great charities that you can send these to um, the Linus Project through Quilt Guilds things like that um, so lots of good places for uh, quilters to sh to spread the love and last but not least is a, is a question that I answered right on Facebook, which is, am I back to sewing full-time at my dining room table now that school's out? And the answer to that is no. I don't even know when I'm going to get that table back. I'm sewing at my desk um, that I have to move my sewing machine out of the way when I need to work. It's I, I actually can't even use my beloved knee lift because it gets hung up. <laughs> on the way the keyboard situation is on that desk. So that's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. There are people with, um, you know, worse problems than an inconvenient sewing situation. So I'm glad my kids are home and that they're safe and nobody is sick. So that's what it is. So that concludes our uh, Q&A session. Thanks to everyone who uh, submitted a question. So let's move on. Um, let's talk a little bit about books. I have not been reading that much because I am obsessed with my Australian soap opera but I did have a couple of books that I wanted to talk about um, that are quilting related so um, I had sh did a little video uh, showing some of the books that C&T has sent me of their their new releases and I'm completely intrigued by this one called um, 11 easily pieced projects sensational quilts for scrap lovers and it's by Judy Gauthier I hope I'm saying that right. And she has written many scrap books. Um, I will tell you that right now. But this one I am really loving. She's really organized um, the color schemes by with groups of colors. And I think that's one problem with scrap quilts is sometimes they can look a little bit like scrap vomit. Excuse me for saying that. Um, but I like it when um, different blues are all together, different reds are all together. I think it looks really pretty. So the way her book works, how her system works, is that she has you trim your scraps into specific sizes that all can work together. So if you've ever looked at Bonnie Hunter's scrap system, um, it is brilliant. I have never honestly been able to keep up with it because there's sort of too many sizes. Um, but what's good about that system is that she has ways of keeping pieces bigger, um, which I have a hard time cutting pieces down to smaller sizes because I always think, what if I wanted that fabric in a bigger piece? But I almost never go to my scrap bin unless I'm, I need to like waste fabric. So it probably is not a real problem for me. So for Judy, her sizes are three and a half inches, four and a half inches, and five and a half inch squares. And she actually has templates 
um, that you can, I think, buy through CNT, probably on Amazon. I'll, I'll check it out and put a link in the show notes. But she, so she just has you um, cut things into those sizes and then sort them very roughly, sort them by color. She tells you to don't sweat it like, you know, is this, is this a blue green or is it a green blue just like roughly sort it and then she even has as you pick uh, your project she she has like a flow chart of what how to follow um you know how to pick your fabrics for these different quilts um and uh and and and, and she just explains her whole scrap sorting system so i really i should do that because um i'm really into not wasting right now and i have a huge scrap I got rid of a bunch of scraps about six months or a year ago, but you know, they build up. So anyways, um, so she has all 11 patterns and a lot of why they look so cool is because of the color play involved. And she teaches you how to use a color wheel to get that correct contrast. And that is pretty, pretty cool. So she talks about, you know, uh, triads and analogous colors. Um, complementary color schemes, things like that. And that sounds scary to you. I get you. I do. Um, which totally segues right into this other product that they sent me called the Foolproof Color Wheel Set. And I'm going to try, if I can get some privacy here, to do a video on this. But it is so fun. So it's this um, little kit where it's got a color wheel built in with a little knob right in the middle of it. And then all these black discs with different cutouts. And so um, I'm grabbing this first one right here. Um, and then there's a little legend that explains it. So I'm uh, grabbing disc one, which is called the direct complement wheel. And you take it and you stick it right on this color wheel that they've given you and it has a little wedge for showing um, two different colors. So the first color here I've got is reds and then right across from that is, is greens and because those are complementary colors. But what's really nice about this tool is that it's not like primary red and green, like these colors that in some ways I don't have in my stash. Um, that's my problem with color wheels a lot of times. This shows um, one, two, three, four different um, colors of red for instance and they are the um, it has tints tones and shades which if I have this right I was gonna look this up um, so you have your your regular primary color I think if you um, tints tones and shades ones if you mix that with some white with some gray and with some black something like that so they're different you know to the normal person you just say the different shades but they if you look at them um, they are more like colors you might see in your stash. So, so for this uh, complementary, I've got you know purple and yellow, and blue and orange, you know things like that. And then there's all these other discs. So we've got the color triad disc, and I'm set that over. And then I see that basically uh, kind of purples. What is that kind of purples, oranges, and greens? form a triad and when you look at these things you just you can see oh yeah I've seen that color combination before and that looks really cool here's kind of a greeny blue and a violet and a kind of greeny yellow so they're not just you know so they're they're um, definitely um, not just your simple colors they're they're definitely colors that you could then match some fabrics you know you, you found a combination you could bring your fabrics over to the color wheel and go oh yeah yeah this is kind of close enough to that so anyways um this tool i think would be super helpful when you're doing something like organizing your scraps into um by color and then figuring out a color palette for a scrap quilt which kind of holds the whole thing together together so that's been super fun the other really fun thing that i've been doing from um one of the books that cnt sent me is that i've been doing the puzzle book there's logic puzzles and word searches and crossword puzzles and they're kind of hard i got to tell you they're not easy so that's been kind of a fun thing to sit outside and do this summer as well so I'll put links in the show notes if you want to get a close-up look at any of this stuff. So um, yeah, so those are the books that I've been been looking at. Um, so now let's move on to, to shows and movies. I don't know how many podcasts now that I've been obsessed with this Australian soap opera called A Place to Call Home. I've been watching it on um, Acorn TV. There's six seasons and um, I just finished season five this morning. <laughs> I kept falling asleep watching the 
it's like the end of season five last night. I'm like, you know what? You just need to go to bed. And I got up this morning and finished it. That has been super, super fun. You know what? I would love to know um, from my Australian listeners, so many of the houses that they show on this show have really big porches and people are always sitting outside and eating outside in a way that I find so appealing. Um, and I'm curious if that is a pretty normal um, kind of house design. Now you could say that like in here in the US, uh, like the, you know, in the South, they have big porches. I wish we had a big porch. We do not. We have just like steps right up to our house. Um, someday if we ever move, that is like a, a total checklist item for me is I want a big porch. Um, but anyways, I'm just curious if that's pretty common because I'm thinking, you know, like because of the South, um, they have those big porches because of the heat. Australia, probably the same, the same way. So let me know um, if that is true. But I'm absolutely loving that show. In season five, they've started to tackle some um, race issues with the aboriginals, which has been very interesting. I realize that I have big gaps in my knowledge about, about that. And um, so, yeah, I cannot recommend that show more highly. I'm just loving it. And the other show that my daughter and I watched um, over the last couple of weeks, and we got through it pretty quickly, is season two of Umbrella Academy. Um, I talked about this last year with season one. Um, it's a little bit of a strange show, and I only watched it because she had recommended it. Um, I'm not sure if it's a show I would have watched on my own, but I'm glad I did. It's a little bit superhero-y. Um, so it's about a group of, um, well, a, a bunch of babies were born on the same day um, that all had these special abilities, and one guy went and adopted I don't even know. I'm going to just say like seven of them. And he raised them up to be kind of this crime fighting group called the Umbrella Academy. And um, so season one ended with a big cliffhanger. And um, so that's where we picked up with season two. And uh, it was really fun. I I don't want to say too much because of of spoilers, but it was fun. Here's a fun little fun fact about it is um, there's a character named Allison in it. And she is in the was in the Broadway um, cast of Hamilton, the original Broadway cast. So if you have watched Hamilton as many times as I have, she is one of the the um, African American women in the ensemble. She's got an undercut, so she's kind of had almost like shaved hair around the sides, but kind of longer hair on top. And if you really know a lot about Hamilton, you will know that there is a character who is the bullet. And she's that character. So that was just super fun. I mean, and she looks completely different in Umbrella Academy. So I, I just don't even, uh, would never have figured that out. I think my daughter somehow read that online. Um, and, oh, yesterday, um, we were looking for a movie to watch in the afternoon when it was really hot. And we ended up watching, my husband and my daughter and I, Steel Magnolias. Do you remember that movie? Oh, my gosh. Um that I love that movie so much as a matter of fact at the end as I'm crying I go I just sort of choked out I love that movie I I think I'm the only one of the three of us that really loves that movie I'm not sure my daughter really got it she was crocheting while she was uh listen so she's mostly listening you miss so much I kept telling her you have to look up right now you have to see this part you're going to miss something if you don't (laughs) watch this part but um I remember seeing that movie in the 90s and um, loving it then. And, and at some point, my daughter was like, I don't really see, like nothing's really happening. And I just kept saying, it's, it's a movie about relationships. It's a movie about strong female relationships. But um, so anyways, that brought back some, some good memories. But compared to the way movies are kind of made these days, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a plot-driven movie, you know? But that's how I like my... My novels, I like character over plot, and apparently I like my movies the same way. And lastly, so if you've been listening for a while, you know that um, I've been on a little bit of a health journey where I've given up sugar and white flour, and somewhere along the line, I saw reference to a movie called That Sugar Film. (laughs) Very boring title. I think think it's just on Netflix. And if you ever watched Super Size Me, back in the day where, um, what was his name, Morgan Spurlock, basically ate McDonald's every day for a month or something. Yeah, 
for 30 days and, and saw how that affected his, his health. This is the same idea. As a matter of fact, he consulted with Morgan Spurlock and he created a situation where for six weeks he had to eat 40 grams of sugar a day, not 40 grams, 40 teaspoons of sugar a day, which apparently is pretty common. He is actually Australian, and that was like the average amount of sugar that um, the average Australian was eating per day. I'm sure it's very similar in the U.S. And the kicker here is that he was not allowed to get the sugar from ice cream, candy, cookies, baked things like that. They were more like hidden sugar in things that seemed healthy. So like, for instance, his first breakfast, he ate um, granola and yogurt and a glass of juice. And it was 20 teaspoons of sugar. It was half his sugar <laughs> for that seemingly healthy breakfast. So yeah, there were just things in... Um, a lot of processed foods basically and it was insane how sick he got you know how 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 all this sugar was affecting him he actually didn't eat sugar before this he was he's a pretty healthy guy so and he went from you know being very healthy within six weeks things were you know obviously not good so anyways that was um a very eye-opening um movie about sugar let me just move on to the health update. I told you guys I was going to kind of, for accountability purposes, just talk about how my health journey is going. So again, no sugar, no white flour. I do, do also do intermittent fasting, which means I basically um, skip breakfast. So I just eat uh, lunch and dinner, just two meals a day and really no snacks. Um, and I'm down 11 pounds in seven weeks and I am not feeling as hungry. I've definitely broken the sugar craving cycle and I'm pretty happy. Like I just feel really um, stabilized mentally. I'm, I, when you only eat twice a day, you know, your mind just has other things to think about than food. And that's probably been the greatest relief. So, so yeah, I'm just going to keep going. I still got a ways to go, um, but I'll keep you posted. And if you want to know anything more, just contact me however you would like to on the blog, Instagram DM, Facebook Messenger, however, I'm happy to answer any questions. But the, the book that really tipped me over the edge on this one is called The Obesity Code and the podcast, strangely, um, Weight Loss for Busy Physicians <laughs> is just a gold mine of information about not only how to eat, but then how to um, mentally uh, deal with your emotions without wanting to eat. So those are my two things that have just been helping me a lot. Let's move on to homemaking. I don't know about you guys, but I fell off the wagon a little bit with Fly Lady. I, uh, my, my weekly routines are down. We get the house cleaned once a week, but what I wasn't doing was the zone cleaning. And the zone cleaning is my favorite part of the Fly Lady system, which is to take one area of your house um, every month, you know, so like uh, week two, which is what we just finished, is kitchen every month. So you, you don't feel compelled that you have to get everything done in, to deep clean the kitchen because it's going to come up again in four weeks. And so uh, the kitchen is obviously the, the hardest hit part of our house with five of us living here and cooking all the meals. And so this uh, week I finally got back in there. Well, and I paid my son to do a few things to wipe down the outsides of the kitchen cabinets. And then actually he even got in there with this stuff called um, Old English Scratch Cover and was able to, our, our cabinets are like, uh, see, he's going to be 18. So they are 17 years old. And um, they're starting to wear. So you have, have this scratch cover that's almost just like a little mini stain that will just cover a multitude of sins. And that's all I really want is that when you look at the kitchen, it doesn't look beat up. You know what? It, it is a little beat up because we use it all the time. And that's okay as long as it looks reasonable. So he got in there and did that. That made me feel so good. Um, and I loved it when I was on the monthly routine of doing the cleaning the dishwasher and cleaning out my coffee maker. So I just do that, um, the coffee maker with a little citric acid and run some water through it. And then um, 
I don't know, it's like Lemmy Shine or something is a little dishwasher cleaner. And uh, that was probably the trickiest part is to find a, a, a time when that dishwasher was empty because it's never empty, if you know what I mean. So, um, but I got inspired to, to get back on this by watching, of course, my favorite Diane in Denmark videos. And I will put a link in the show notes to one of the videos. She had a kind of restart for your morning routine. Um, and she is just so good at making, um, keeping up with these routines seem fun and attainable. So I'm going to put that in there. That was kind of a good jump start for me. Um, and, and she's just talking about your morning routine, about, um, you know, figuring out what's for dinner early in the, you know, in the day and getting your load of laundry going and doing whatever little zone work. And, and she just makes it seem like fun. So I'll put the, a link in the show notes to that. But if you'd like a little bit of accountability, um, consider joining us over at the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group. Um, I sometimes put little prompts in there about what nagging task can you get done today? Um, how are you going to use your 15 minutes today? And um, I think it's just kind of helpful to know that other people are out there going, you know what, I really need to wipe out my refrigerator today too. Um, so, so join us over there. So now I want to move on to reviews. Thank you so much. Um, I have a new review. <laughs> and the person who left it is S-K-D-F-J-S-D-K-J-I-E. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your review. And again, um, if you enjoy the podcast, I um, would respectfully uh, love it if you would pop over to Apple Podcasts, iTunes, whatever, and leave a rating or a review. It helps people find the podcast. I've got this little problem when I started this podcast that I didn't put the word quilting in the title. And so it doesn't automatically pop up. <laughs> When people search for quilting podcasts, didn't think about that when I named um, my blog or my podcast years ago. So I appreciate um, you guys leaving ratings and reviews, which helps people to find the podcast. As always, thank you so much for spending this time for me, for participating in our little chat. Let's keep the conversation going over on the Facebook group. And as always, you can find me on my blog at Simple Handmade Every Day and on Instagram as Kristen Esser. Have a wonderful week. This morning and finished it. That has been super, super fun. You know what? I would love to know, um, from my Australian listeners, so many of the houses that they show on this show have really big porches and people are always sitting outside and eating outside in a way that I find so appealing. Um, and I'm curious if that is a pretty normal um, kind of house design. Now you could say that like in here in the US, uh, like the, you know, in the South, they have big porches. I wish we had a big porch. We do not. We have just like steps right up to our house. Um, someday if we ever move, that is like a, a total checklist item for me is I want a big porch. Um, but anyways, I'm just curious if that's pretty common because I'm thinking, you know, like because of the South, um, they have those big porches because of the heat. Australia, probably the same, the same way. So let me know um, if that is true. But I'm absolutely loving that show. In season five, they've started to tackle some um, race issues with the aboriginals, which has been very interesting. I realize that I have big gaps in my knowledge about, about that. And um, so yeah, I cannot recommend that show more highly. I'm just loving it. And the other show that my daughter and I watched um, over the last couple of weeks, and we got through it pretty quickly, is season two of Umbrella Academy. Um, I talked about this last year with season one. Um, it's a little bit of a strange show, and I only watched it because she had recommended it. Um, I'm not sure if it's a show I would have watched on my own, but I'm glad I did. It's a little bit superhero-y. Um, so it's about a group of, um, well, a, a bunch of babies were born on the same day, um, that all had these special abilities and one guy went and adopted I don't even know I'm going to just say like seven of them and he raised them up to be kind of this crime fighting group called the Umbrella Academy and um, so season one ended with a big cliffhanger and um, so that's where we picked up with season two and uh, it was really fun I, I don't want to say too much because of, the, of spoilers but it was fun here's a fun little fun fact about it 
is um, there's a character named Allison in it, and she is in the was in the Broadway um, cast of Hamilton, the original Broadway cast. So if you have watched Hamilton as many times as I have, she is one of the the um, African American women in the ensemble. She's got an undercut, so she's kind of got almost like shaved hair around the sides, but kind of longer hair on top. And if you really know a lot about Hamilton, you will know that there is a character who is the bullet. And she's that character. So that was just super fun. I mean, and she looks completely different in Umbrella Academy. So I, I just don't even, uh, would never have figured that out. I think my daughter somehow read that online. Um, and, oh, yesterday, um, we were looking for a movie to watch in the afternoon when it was really hot. And we ended up watching, my husband and my daughter and I, Steel Magnolias. Do you remember that movie? Oh, my gosh. Um that I love that movie so much as a matter of fact at the end as I'm crying I go I just sort of choked out I love that movie I I think I'm the only one of the three of us that really loves that movie I'm not sure my daughter really got it she was crocheting while she was uh listening so she's mostly listening you miss so much I kept telling her you have to look up right now you have to see this part you're going to miss something if you don't (laughs) watch this part but um I remember seeing that movie in the 90s and um, loving it then. And, and at some point, my daughter was like, I don't really see, like nothing's really happening. And I just kept saying, it's, it's a movie about relationships. It's a movie about strong female relationships. But um, so anyways, that brought back some, some good memories. But compared to the way movies are kind of made these days, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a plot-driven movie, you know? But that's how I like my... My novels, I like character over plot, and apparently I like my movies the same way. And lastly, so if you've been listening for a while, you know that um, I've been on a little bit of a health journey where I've given up sugar and white flour, and somewhere along the line, I saw reference to a movie called That Sugar Film. (laughs) Very boring title. I think think it's just on Netflix. And if you ever watched Super Size Me back in the day where, um, what was his name, Morgan Spurlock, basically ate McDonald's every day for a month or something, yeah, for 30 days and, and saw how that affected his, his health. This is the same idea. As a matter of fact, he consulted with Morgan Spurlock and he created a situation where for six weeks he had to eat 40 grams of sugar a day, not 40 grams, 40 teaspoons of sugar a day, which apparently is pretty common. He is actually Australian, and that was like the average amount of sugar that um, the average Australian was eating per day. I'm sure it's very similar in the U.S. And the kicker here is that he was not allowed to get the sugar from ice cream, candy, cookies, baked things like that. They were more like hidden sugar in things that seemed healthy. So like, for instance, his first breakfast, he ate um, granola and yogurt and a glass of juice. And it was 20 teaspoons of sugar. It was half his sugar (laughs) for that seemingly healthy breakfast. So yeah, there were just things in um, a lot of processed foods, basically. And it was insane how sick he got you know how 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 all this sugar was affecting him he actually didn't eat sugar before this he was he's a pretty healthy guy so he went from you know being very healthy within six weeks things were you know obviously not good so anyways that was um a very eye-opening um movie about sugar let me just move on to the health update. I told you guys I was going to kind of, for accountability purposes, just talk about how my health journey is going. So again, no sugar, no white flour. I do, do also do intermittent fasting, which means I basically um, skip breakfast. So I just eat uh, lunch and dinner, just two meals a day and really no snacks. Um, and I'm down 11 pounds in seven weeks and I am not feeling as hungry. I've definitely broken the sugar craving cycle and I'm pretty happy. Like I just feel really, um, stabilized mentally. I'm, I, when you only eat twice a day, you know, your mind just has other things to think about than food. And that's probably been the greatest relief. So, so yeah, I'm just going to keep going. I still got a ways to go. Um, but I'll keep you posted.
And if you want to know anything more, just contact me however you would like to on the blog, Instagram DM, Facebook Messenger, however, I'm happy to answer any questions. But the the book that really tipped me over the edge on this one is called The Obesity Code and the podcast, strangely, um, Weight Loss for Busy Physicians. <laughs> is just a gold mine of information about not only how to eat, but then how to um, mentally uh, deal with your emotions without wanting to eat. So those are my two things that have just been helping me a lot. Let's move on to homemaking. I don't know about you guys, but I fell off the wagon a little bit with Fly Lady. I, uh, my, my weekly routines are down. We get the house cleaned once a week, but what I wasn't doing was the zone cleaning. And the zone cleaning is my favorite part of the fly lady system which is to take one area of your house um every month you know so like uh, week two which is what we just finished is kitchen every month so you you don't feel compelled that you have to get everything done and to deep clean the kitchen because it's going to come up again in four weeks and so uh, the kitchen is obviously the the hardest hit part of our house with five of us living here and cooking all the meals and so this uh, week, I finally got back in there, well, and I paid my son to do a few things, to wipe down the outsides of the kitchen cabinets, and then actually he even got in there with this stuff called um, Old English Scratch Cover, and was able to, our, our cabinets are like, uh, see, he's going to be 18, so they are 17 years old, and um they're starting to wear. So you have have this scratch cover that's almost just like a little mini stain that will just cover a multitude of sins. And that's all I really want is that when you look at the kitchen, it doesn't look beat up. You know what? It is a little beat up because we use it all the time and that's okay as long as it looks reasonable. So he got in there and did that. That made me feel so good. Um, and I loved it when I was on the monthly routine of doing the cleaning the dishwasher and cleaning out my coffee maker. So I just do that, um, the coffee maker with a little citric acid and run some water through it. And then, um, I don't know, it's like Lemmy Shine or something is a little dishwasher cleaner. And uh, that was probably the trickiest part is to find a, a, a time when that dishwasher was empty because it's never empty, if you know what I mean. <laughs> So, um, but I got inspired to, to get back on this by watching, of course, my favorite Diane in Denmark videos. And I will put a link in the show notes to one of the videos. She had a kind of restart for your morning routine. Um, and she is just so good at making, um, keeping up with these routines seem fun and attainable. So I'm going to put that in there. That was kind of a good jumpstart for me. Um, and, and she's just talking about your morning routine, about, um, you know, figuring out what's for dinner early in the, you know, in the day and getting your load of laundry going and doing whatever little zone work. And, and she just makes it seem like fun. So I'll put the, a link in the show notes to that. But if you'd like a little bit of accountability, um, consider joining us over at the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group. Um, I sometimes put little prompts in there about what nagging tasks can you get done today? Um, How are you going to use your 15 minutes today? And um, I think it's just kind of helpful to know that other people are out there going, you know what, I really need to wipe out my refrigerator today too. Um, so, So join us over there. So now I want to move on to reviews. Thank you so much. Um, I have a new review. (laughs) And the person who left it is S-K-D-F-J-S-D-K-J-I-E. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you so much for your review. And again, um, if you enjoy the podcast, I um, would respectfully uh, love it if you would pop over to Apple Podcasts, iTunes, whatever, and leave a rating or a review. It helps people find the podcast. I've got this little problem when I started this podcast that I didn't put the word quilting in the title. And so it doesn't automatically pop up. <laughs> when people search for quilting podcasts. Didn't think about that when I named um, my blog or my podcast years ago. So I appreciate um, you guys leaving ratings and reviews, which helps people to find the podcast. As always, thank you so much for spending this time for me, for participating in our little chat. Let's keep the conversation going over on the Facebook group. And as always, you can find me on my blog at Simple Handmade Every Day and on Instagram as Kristen Esser. Have a wonderful week. Years old. 
and um, they're starting to wear. So you have, have this scratch cover that's almost just like a little mini stain that will just cover a multitude of sins. And that's all I really want is that when you look at the kitchen, it doesn't look beat up. You know what? It, it is a little beat up because we use it all the time and that's okay as long as it looks reasonable. So he got in there and did that. That made me feel so good. Um, and I loved it when I was on the monthly routine of doing the cleaning the dishwasher and cleaning out my coffee maker. So I just do that, um, the coffee maker with a little citric acid and run some water through it. And then, um, I don't know, it's like Lemmy Shine or something is a little dishwasher cleaner. And uh, that was probably the trickiest part is to find a, a, a time when that dishwasher was empty because it's never empty, if you know what I mean. So, um, but I got inspired to, to get back on this by watching, of course, my favorite Dying in Denmark videos. And I will put a link in the show notes to one of the videos. She had a kind of restart for your morning routine. Um, and she is just so good at making, um, keeping up with these routines seem fun and attainable. So I'm going to put that in there. I thought it was kind of a good jump start for me. Um, and, and she's just talking about your morning routine, about, um, you know, figuring out what's for dinner early in the, you know, in the day and getting your load of laundry going and doing whatever little zone work. And, and she just makes it seem like fun. So I'll put the, a link in the show notes to that. But if you'd like a little bit of accountability, um, consider joining us over at the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group. Um, I sometimes put little prompts in there about what nagging task can you get done today? Um, how are you gonna use your 15 minutes today? And um, I think it's just kind of helpful to know that other people <laughs> are out there going, you know what? I really need to wipe out my refrigerator today too. Um, so, so join us over there. So now I wanna move on to reviews. Thank you so much. Um, I have a new review <laughs> and the person who left it is S-K-D-F-J-S-D-K-J-I-E. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your review. And again, um, if you enjoy the podcast, I um, would respectfully uh, love it if you would pop over to Apple Podcasts, iTunes, whatever, and leave a rating or a review. It helps people find the podcast. I've got this little problem when I started this podcast that I didn't put the word quilting in the title. And so it doesn't automatically pop up. <laughs> when people search for quilting podcasts. Didn't think about that when I named um, my blog or my podcast years ago. So I appreciate um, you guys leaving ratings and reviews, which helps people to find the podcast. As always, thank you so much for spending this time for me, for participating in our little chat. Let's keep the conversation going over on the Facebook group. And as always, you can find me on my blog at Simple Handmade Every Day and on Instagram as Kristen Esser. Have a wonderful week. Love it. If you would pop over to Apple Podcasts, iTunes, whatever, and leave a rating or a review, it helps people find the podcast. I've got this little problem when I started this podcast that I didn't put the word quilting in the title. And so it doesn't automatically pop up when people search for quilting podcasts. Didn't think about that when I named um, my blog or my podcast years ago. So I appreciate um, you guys leaving ratings and reviews, which helps people to find the podcast. As always, thank you so much for spending this time for me, for participating in our little chat. Let's keep the conversation going over on the Facebook group. And as always, you can find me on my blog at Simple Handmade Every Day and on Instagram as Kristen Esser. Have a wonderful week conversation going over on the Facebook group. And as always, you can find me on my blog at Simple Handmade Every Day and on Instagram as Kristen Esser. Have a wonderful week.